friends! Welcome back to Lemon Tree Corner. Uh, this week in the studio, we're going to play a little bit of catch up. I'm going to take you with us to Disneyland, and I hope it's going to be a lot of fun. So I hope you stick around and dive in. Okay, so this week we're going to catch up on some things. Last week we made our little tablet sleeves. So I'm going to continue on with these. I've got a bunch of fabric lined up for this. And we've got our piggies. So we have all the rest of our piggies cut out, ready to sew. So I'm going to go ahead and put those together. And then we also have our coin purses. Uh, so I'm going to try a new iteration of just cutting like an inch off of this. And I think we're going to go with this one with the top zip and the tabs. I think that's just going to work out better for us. So this is all in an effort to put some things together for the spring craft fair. So in March, I'm doing the Torrance Craftsman's Guild Spring Craft Fair. So getting prepared for that, just making a bunch of things for that. And we'll just continue on with life and see what happens. So if that sounds good to you, go ahead and grab yourself a heartwarming cup of tea or a water or whatever you want to drink and curl up and let's get this week started. Be there wherever you are Cause you sound 
shine bright like you shine bright like a shoe star. We are back to working on the sweater. I'm almost done with the yoke. We uh, have seven out of nine repeats done. So I'm halfway through the eighth, which is good. This is what it's looking like. It's looking very big now. So that's good. I have to try it on again. But I think my theory about it weighing itself down is correct. And then I think we join the sleeves holes after that. Yeah, so far it's a really nice project. This yarn feels kind of scratchy. It's got like some twigs in it. It's really bizarre. I'm hoping that when I wash and block it, um, it will soften up a lot, but... That's where we're at right now. So here's something I've been using for quite a while. Originally, I ordered the kitchen measurement conversion chart, but it came with this uh, menu thing, which I really wasn't gonna use for menu planning, but I do like using it for checking things off that I'm supposed to be doing. So that's really nice. Um, and I also just use this over here for some ongoing things. But I like having the things listed for the week and crossing them off and knowing that I've accomplish something so very excited to have used this for quite a while now and let's switch over we We have our next one cut out. This is out of our Lori Holt fabric. Got all of our pieces here and we're gonna use a green zipper to go with this one. So after talking to my research and development director, AKA my brother-in-law, we have come up with a plan of doing our two pieces of fusible fleece we're going to make one that stays out of the seam allowance. So let's get this out here. <clears throat> so we are going to have one that we've cut shorter that stays out of the seam allowance. And then we have another one that we can put on top that will be able to iron through here. It will be sewn in. So hopefully I won't have it coming loose or bunching up on me. So that's one theory. 
The other thing we could do, option number two, is to use Thermalam. It's like the fusible fleece, but it's a little bit thicker. I still don't think that one layer of the Thermalam is going to give us this nice thickness that we get with the two layers of the fusible fleece. I just don't feel like that's going to have enough protection for a tablet. Um, so there's that. We could also do foam. So we could do the foam and just have the one layer of foam. So I'm going to try this way with these because the fusible fleece just does not fuse to itself. So I'm hoping that I can fuse it around the edges here just to kind of lock it into place. And then when we sew it, we can sew it um, and just one layer of the foam will be in the seam allowance, which isn't ideal, but that's if that's what it takes, that's what it takes. So basically we had to cut two pieces of foam for each piece, one that's a little bit smaller and one that's a little bit bigger. So I don't know if you can see that, but that's what we got going on. So I'm going to attach the fleece and make this one. Um, I also have to take step-by-step -step pictures for our jury process for the craft fair so next month I can present that so this is going to be the bag I do that with I was supposed to do it with the last one and I put the whole thing together and realized I had only taken one picture so that's not good and then I realized that I never showed you guys the finished pork chops or <laughs> did a taste test so I am going to show you guys the finished um, gingerbread squares and we will take a look at those so we can open this up. I almost forgot to put the tab in. I put it in at the last second. Okay, so we're gonna try and get this out here. So I think this is working out good. I did find another big stash of fabric scraps that I could use for these. I don't know how many of these I want to make. I'd kind of like to see how they do in the spring fair. I feel like this is an item that's more approachable for people. So I kind of want to just go with it. But yeah, it's just kind of hard to tell what people are going to want, what people are going to buy, and kind of just got to make stuff I want to make at this point. So it definitely helps to sew it into the seam. It's much more stable. It also makes the seams um, more protected as far as if you're going to have an expensive iPad in here. You want it to have all the protection it can have. So that's a plus. I think that's going to work out pretty well. Um, yeah, maybe I'll just go ahead and make the rest of the box of these just to have them for the fair and then see how they do. But I, yeah, I really like that idea. Good idea, John. Good job. <laughs> it worked out pretty well. So let's take a look at our finished gingerbread bars. I sprinkled a little sugar on top. I also went back. They were kind of like a gooey raw texture. So I put them back in the oven for a couple of minutes, and I've obviously already had one, but I wanted to give you a review. So after cooking them longer, the texture is right now, but the big chunks of stem ginger in here do not work for me at all, and they're kind of hard to avoid. So this is not a win for me. I did get another mix of the chocolate chip blondie mix, so we will make some more blondie bars probably this weekend. Um, to enjoy because I did want a sweet treat and that didn't work out for me but hopefully my husband will like them I just don't like that raw ginger taste like I like gingerbread and I like ginger snaps but it's just too too much of the actual stem ginger for me in there other than that it would have been great I also wanted to show you guys what our sweater looks like so far so let me get that out so here we have our Azarella sweater um, I'm done with the initial repeats for the yoke, except I just looked at the instructions. 
I was so excited to be done and then I realized, oh, I've got another set of rows to do before we can move on. So let me tilt that down a little bit here. So you can see what that looks like, looking pretty good. So we're just about ready. I've got uh, like three more rows and then we're gonna attach these to make our arms. So that's how that's working out. I <clears throat> don't know how to block a sweater, but uh, we will find out. So that's where we're at with that. Now up ahead, we're going to check out this sweet spot here. I think you guys are going to love this. It's called the Elephant Bathing Oh! Oh, thank goodness they've all got their trunks on. Man, I know, it's mega awkward when they don't, but it's even worse when I know.
Hi friends, thanks for joining me this week. Let's take a look at our finished projects. I have done a third iteration of our tablet sleeve. So this has the double layer of fleece. Thanks to my brother-in-law's quick thinking, we figured out how to do that. I'm also wondering if I should make them this way instead. There's a cute pattern, I think it's Center Street Quilts did, which, which has a zipper going this way. I haven't gotten back to the coin purses at all, but we are working on the piggies. So we have two finished piggies, which is nice. And uh, I've got the rest of them ready to sew, like right now. <laughs> so we'll be working on those next week, as well as the rest of those tablets. And I gotta get the thing done for the jury, like the whole, the whole process. So lots of those things. And we had a wonderful time at Disneyland. Thank you to my niece Moira who works there and signed us in as a Christmas present. So we have not been there in I think over five years. So this is really cool. I, I'm like a kid at Disneyland so walked all over the place. I got like, what was the end? How many steps? At the end of the day I had 21,496 steps. <laughs> which is like all the steps I need for the week. Uh, my feet were killing me. I think my shoes were rubbing on the bottom. They're still very, very sore, so I haven't done any exercise since, since then. But the rest of my body did pretty well. It was just my feet. It was super crowded, so we were standing in line, even with the lightning passes, because uh, we signed up for the Genie Plus since we had the free tickets. Uh, the Genie Plus is like $30 per ticket. So signed up for that and did the whole lightning lane thing. And so that worked out pretty well, but there were just, you know, a few things that we had to stand in line for. And I was just beat by the end of the day. I had to go get a coffee and rest for a bit. And then, yeah, finally got to Space Mountain at the very end of the day and did that. There were no fireworks, unfortunately. So didn't get to see those, but just had a really lovely time and got to see the new Star Wars land, which was not built the last time that we went there. So that was really cool. My husband loves Star Wars and I like Star Wars too, <laughs> but uh, it was just kind of neat to see. It was like being on a film set because you were on one of the planets in one of the cities, one of the trading towns and uh, got to see Chewbacca and got to go on the new rides there, which were really fun. I really liked Smuggler's Run better than Rise of the Resistance. I'm not sure, I'm not sure. I think it was just more interactive for me. I got to be the pilot and I was, you know, driving the ship and everything. So I really had a lot of fun on that ride. And then, yeah, just the usual, my favorites are the um, Big Thunder Mountain. So I included a clip from that. It was really hard to try and like film with my cell phone and do the ride at the same time. So I only did that once. Um, and Pirates is my other favorite. We got all the way up to the front. So they were having technical difficulties all day. So certain rides were down temporarily and came back up. And Pirates of the Caribbean is one of the ones that was down and up and down and up. And just as we got to the front of the line, because there's no lightning passes for that, you have to just stand in line. So we had been in line only about 30 minutes, which is pretty fast for the day. Uh, right when we got to the front, boom, the ride went offline. And I think we were waiting there for like another 30 minutes. While they were trying to get it up and running, we were like, might as well just wait. We're like first in line. Uh, and they finally got it up and running and we were able to go on it because I really didn't want to miss that one because that's my second favorite. <laughs> so yeah, just got to do everything I wanted to do and had a really good time and just trying to let my feet recover. I did get a special treat for myself. So uh, little Heather was feeling a lot of FOMO <laughs> at the park. Everybody had their ears. And I was, was trying to be practical and I wore like my sun hat for most of the day. And then I had a hat and scarf for the morning and evening when it got really chilly. So I wasn't going to spend a, you know, it was like 37 bucks for a pair of ears. And I was like, I don't need those. But everybody's walking around with ears and I just felt left out. And when we got to, 
what was it, the Star Tours. Um, you know how they have you go through the gauntlet of the store? <laughs> well, at the store they had these backpack purses, which I love me a good backpack purse. And I'm obviously not going to make one. <laughs> They're very complicated. And they had them for 50% off. And normally, like, Disneyland bags are $300. So I didn't even want to look at the price tag. And my niece um, can take me to the employee store where she gets a really deep discount. So I wasn't planning on buying anything. But the bag was only $78 plus the 50% discount. So I only paid $2 more for this bag than I would have paid for a pair of ears. And this is much more useful after you leave the park. So very cool. It's got, it's purple. It's got little images of the characters. So you've got Mickey and Minnie and Goofy and Pluto and Daffy and Daisy and the chipmunks and everybody's there. So very cool. Um, I would mostly use this on vacation. Uh, it's kind of hard on my day-to-day -day purse to use something like this because I try and fit my day-to-day -day purse in my work bag. It's a whole thing. Anyway, I still love it and I will use it when I am on vacation or out and about in town. So I think that's about it. We're getting really far on our sweater. It's really coming together now, so I'll give you an update next week on that. And yeah, just had a really good time. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me to Disneyland. I tried to keep it short, although it's probably not as short as it should be. But I just wanted to take you along on that experience. And I hope you have a wonderful week ahead. And I hope to see you back here next week. Love you. Bye.